Welcome to a brand new series where we're looking at BuildShip and Flutterflow and how the tools can work in harmony with each other to really give you the ability to level up your Flutterflow applications. Now, if you haven't checked out BuildShip so far, there's a little paragraph on screen which will hopefully whet your appetite in terms of what BuildShip can actually do for you. But in a nutshell, it allows you to create these rapid back-end services which can really then support your Flutterflow application. It means you can offload the intelligence that you need to with into build ship and then means that Flutterflow really just becomes that kind of that that lovely look and feel that very sort of um, lightweight sort of presentation layer for your users to use so in this particular video we're going to look at um, what build ship actually is but very very first we're going to look at exactly just as a recap really of what Flutterflow is actually doing and how build ship kind of separates itself from what, Fl what Flutterflow is actually doing from a presentation perspective so we know at this moment that Flutterflow can create these beautiful looking user interfaces Faces. We know that if you've used Flutterflow for a while, you know how amazing it is to actually build rapid applications. Now, what we can also do in Flutterflow, of course, we can create logical flows. We can put action blocks together. We can give our presentation layer some kind of intelligence over what it needs to do and how it needs to respond to either data that's got coming into the application or decisions that you actually make with inside the actual user interface so you could be using Superbase you could be using Firebase or you could be calling out to third-party APIs our UIs can respond to that data and of course if we want to extend the functionality of Flutterflow we can do that as well we can create custom widgets and custom functions so we can do all of that kind of more lightweight stuff with inside Flutterflow itself the most amazing thing though of course is you can actually deploy to the app stores with inside Floodflow. so it's fantastic and, and also as well a fantastic iPad app really a big fan of the iPad app so please do go and check that out if you haven't done so so far so that is um, Flutterflow. Let's talk a little bit about BuildShip. So BuildShip allows you to kind of visually build up the supporting services. So just like you would do in Flutterflow where you kind of, you, you have action blocks and you kind of string them together. Well, you can kind of do the same thing with BuildShip as well. But the fantastic thing about BuildShip, of course, is that you generally don't need to write much code. You can actually use the power of AI to actually generate these logical steps that you put together. And then, of course, ultimately, when those workflows are played out from your Flutterflow application, you can then respond quite nicely back into Flutterflow with what Flutterflow needs to know. And the great thing also about BuildShip is the fact is it can call out other third-party services as well. So for example, you could be calling out to open AI, doing some a bit of AI intelligence, and then you can kind of make some decisions with inside BuildShip. And of course, you can then return back the results back to Flutterflow itself. And of course, we've got increased security as well. So we're actually offloading a lot of this stuff happening on the server side. So of course, you're not exposing any keys or anything like that. And of course, it's held nice and tight with inside BuildShip platform as well. And the magical thing is, of course, is it can accelerate development. If you've used Flutterflow, you know how fast you can build applications inside Flutterflow. Well, to actually be able to build back-end services um, just as quickly is quite amazing. So um, yeah, I wish that was around 10 years ago, but it certainly isn't, and it is now. So that's fantastic for you guys. So let's then look at this then. So it's two tools solving two different problems. That's the way that I'm positioning it within this particular video. So then let's look at a sample scenario then. So let's, I'm going to use this particular sample here as a haircut booking application. So quite a, quite a common, I'm sure this is quite a common use case where, you know, customers would log into your app, they can see their stylist, they can see um, what services they provide and whether they want to book them up and book a time slot and all that kind of stuff. So just keep that in the back of your mind, a very, very simple, lightweight kind of booking application that you would actually have with inside Flutterflow. And you can see here some of the features that it would generally have. So so that's great. So um, let's then talk about what Flutterflow can do for us, because what I've highlighted in uh, white there, you can see exactly the kind of sections that actually Flutterflow can actually do quite comfortably. OK, you've got that on screen. I don't need to read that to you because it's quite clearly there. But actually, the power then comes into some of the business intelligence of your application and why you would then need to offload that to something like BuildShip. So let's look at some scenarios then. So for example, booking of appointments, it could be that you could have two users using your app at the same time. They could be all looking to book the same slot. Now, one user could have spent a little bit longer on the UI than the other, but they both tried to book the same slot. So with the ability with inside BuildShip, you can make some business decisions and you can actually then return back responsibly back to Flutterflow to say, actually, that booking is no longer available. So that's just a simple example there of what BuildShip can actually do. 
Of course, you can send appointment confirmations and reminders and notifications. You can even schedule those or whatever with inside BuildChip. You've got the ability to do that as well. Now, what about business rules around cancellation of appointments? Well, um, you might want to enforce some rules. So, for example, it might be there's a time limit on cancellations and things like that. Well, BuildChip, you can build up the decisions that it needs to make and then respond then nicely back to your Flutterflow application with a very more delicate response that they can't actually cancel their appointment because of whatever rule. Um, and of course, there might be some functionality of inside Flutterflow where you might want to, for example, um, actually then find the next available appointment. So by clicking a button with inside your UI, um, the hard work can then be done with inside BuildChip, find the next available appointment and then return that back to your Flutterflow application. It's the kind of thing you probably could not do with inside Flutterflow very easily unless you did a lot of coding with inside uh, the custom code. So just bear that one in mind. Um, that's, um, that's a great kind of scenario, hopefully, that will uh, generally give you an idea of the sort of uh, problems that you can actually then solve with inside uh, BuildChip itself. So there we go then, that is a little bit about BuildChip and in terms of what it can actually do for you. Okay, so head over to the website there, create an account, log yourself in and start playing with the platform. Let's talk very quickly about the upcoming content that we got with inside this particular series. So we're gonna be looking at key concepts of inside BuildChip and how um, you can solve those problems um, with inside BuildChip to support your Flutterflow application. So this is very much gonna be a Flutterflow focused. So hopefully there be, should be something there for you. Um, for example, utilize the super base of inside Flutterflow. We know what we can do in Flutterflow, but we know what we can't do in Flutterflow. So how do we utilize the likes of Superbase with inside BuildShip itself? How do we maintain a secure uh, access to the data with inside our Superbase database? We'll cover some of that stuff as well. And generally we'll be promoting good practice when building integration between Flutterflow and BuildShip itself. So of course we've got kind of got that clear separation there between the front end and what the back end is actually doing for us. And of course, extended tools as well. Whatever supporting tools that we actually got available to us where it would actually uh, help us in our build ship uh, development and, our, and of course our flood of flow development as well and what I'd also like to try to do as well along the way is to create some sort of full sort of Flutterflow applications that's using BuildChip services. So do look out for those on the channel as well at some point in the not too distant future. So that's a little bit about what's coming up, a little bit about me. I'm really proud, uh, really proud to be an ambassador for Flutterflow itself. Um, something that um, uh, I'm very honoured and uh, enjoy being a part of the community as well. So uh, yeah, thank you to the Flutterflow team for supporting me there and of course uh, as well educator of the year and again a big shout out to the community as well for kind of putting a good shout out there for the content on my channel so if you if you love flutterflow please go and check out the content on my channel there is there's, there's so much on there and of course and um, there's my social links at the bottom of course as well please hit me up on any of the social channels and of course, if you want to become a member of the Digital Pros No Code Academy, a lovely little Flutterflow community that's being developed there. It's got their own Discord server and all that kind of stuff. So please go and check out the Patreon as well. So um, that's pretty well much it. Please do obviously like the video. Please do subscribe to my channel and then you'll be kept fully up to date there with all of the content that's coming for Flutterflow and build chip development. So um, it really all it leaves me to say is uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.